Hey guys, welcome to the School Online YouTube channel, the channel that is all about learning, okay? In this channel, we make a lot of videos on web development, WordPress design, e-commerce development, Python development, and a whole lot more. We will take you through the process of everything we're teaching you from beginning to end, step by step, so that you can follow along and build as we build, all right? If you're new to this channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button. The subscribe button is gonna be red right underneath the video that you're watching and like this video and comment on these videos. Let us know what works for you, what doesn't work for you so that we can create content that is more relevant to what you guys want to watch, okay? Also, underneath the video that you're watching, there is that show more button underneath the description please open it up and have a look at some of the links that we've created for you. Every time that we make a video, we will you, we will add all the useful links underneath there. So if you hear me saying in the video that I'm going to link it in the description below, that's where you'll find the link in the description underneath the video, all right, for more information to help you learn along, all right? And a lot of the videos that we make, also we will create timestamps because our videos are long. You don't have to watch the entire video. You can go through those timestamps and read which part of the video you are interested in watching, click on the timestamp and it will fast forward you to that part of the video and you only have to watch that, all right? And we also have linked in the description below our social media channels. So feel free to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. We've got our website right there. And if you want to get in touch with us, my email address is also available in the description below. So let's start learning. In this tutorial, we are going to be covering a table. I'm going to be taking you through the all you need to know Airtable step-by-step guide for beginners so that you can understand what is Airtable and what its use cases are. And because we are uh, primarily a web development um, a channel, we will go into the applications of Airtable in web development, specifically how you can use Airtable to store data for your web application as a back-end, especially if you don't want to do a lot of uh, programming and a lot of, you know, what we call boiler plate coding in trying to develop a database. So I will show you how to use Airtable as that kind of a back and it's going to cut down a lot of, you know, sort of uh, coding that you would have to do. For example, if you were doing something like uh, perhaps using a Python a Django as a back end or some of those other databases that come with it, all right? So I'm gonna take you through this step by step. So um, get ready to follow from the beginning all the way to the end. So what we're going to cover is, first of all, we will look at the pricing for Airtable so that you understand what you're getting yourself into to before you start using a table we're gonna go into the process I'll show you how to create a base create a table and basically the functionality and how to sort of navigate yourself through a table and of course towards the end we're gonna go into actually um, a use case where, we, where I will uh, build something on a table um, that will be an application back end and I will show you quickly how to do that in this period of this tutorial so if you wanna um, um, you know Get started, you know, um, get ready, pull out your coffee, you know, and, and let's get right to it. So basically, what is a table? You know, what is a table and what can a table do? All right. The simplest definition, um, if you really haven't experienced it before, it is like a spreadsheet. OK, so if you've worked with like Excel spreadsheet where you have rows and columns, think of it that way. All right. Think of it as a spreadsheet of rows and columns. All right. And as a result, it can also be like a database, you know, and if you understand database development, databases are really like tables multiple tables and within those tables you get rows and columns the columns represent your um, variables in that uh, in that table and then the rows represent instances of that um you know of that uh table i mean of that function or i mean of that class whatever it is so if for example you were creating a table for um a human or a person um and you wanted to describe a person um you could say a person um perhaps has a name a surname um a height a weight, you know, a gender, those could be like different variables to help you describe a person, right? And you and those variables would fall into columns of that table. And then um, you would have an instance of a person who is me, for example. Um, let's say my name is Bertha, so my name would be Bertha, my surname would be whatever my surname is, my height would be whatever it is, and those would be instances of a person. And every time you would describe a different instance of a person, you would create a new column. So all, I mean, a new row. So the rows are instances and the columns columns are variables that define and then in all of that you get a table which is like a class or whatever it is okay so basically 
Airtable can do that, all right? So it is basically like an Excel spreadsheet. But the difference between um, an Excel spreadsheet and Airtable, we're gonna go into um, now the advance, the advances that Airtable has that, that go beyond what a spreadsheet can do. For example, um, Airtable is cloud-based. Yes, you can get Excel a spreadsheet that are cloud-based, but Airtable is really cloud-based, okay? It's sitting, um, you know, um, 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 you know, on um, you know their um, you know server and it allows for collaboration and people, and multiple people can collaborate on a single table and you can do much more with it right a table allows for advanced views beyond what a spreadsheet can do because if you're looking at a spreadsheet you're looking at rows and columns now within a table you can now start to view those rows and columns in multiple types of views and you will see that when we get to that stage and one of the things I really love a table for, and I think this is the thing that really sets it apart from um, a typical spreadsheet, for example, is the ability to program a table. So it is programmable in the sense that you can program functions into it. You can program how the data is entered into the a table. You can program how the data is taken out of the a table, which actually makes it a reasonable um, you know, back end for an application, all right, or a reasonable database back end, all right, and you're going to see all of that as we go through this tutorial. So I think it's better if I actually illustrate all of this. So let's get started um, uh, with a, a pricing plans for Airtable, okay? So if you go to um, any, um, you know, your web browser, just go and look for Airtable.com uh, uh, forward slash a pricing and you can have a look at how much you are going to be paying for this a table all right so what i love about it is that they do have a free option which means you can actually use a table without paying anything and they don't even ask you for a credit card when you get started with this all right so the free option um you can have as many bases as you like Okay, so if you wanted to build 100 applications, 100 bases, you could do that, all right? But the limitations comes in with how much you can include inside of a base. So within a base itself, you can only have maximum 1,200 records, all right? So this is going to limit what you can do with it. So if you were really just learning and maybe building an application for like a small business or, you know, just for yourself or like part-time projects, school projects, I think this would be sufficient. I think what Airtable wants is for people to be able to use it, but when it comes to actually now wanting to maybe do a commercial app that might have more than 1,200, um, uh, you know, records, then you're gonna have to pay for it. But if you are doing a commercial application, why wouldn't you wanna pay for it, all right? So, um, and then also another limitation over here is the attachments that you can include, um, two gigs of attachment, and that is not a lot of space. All right, two gigs of attachment is not a lot um, on the free version. And this is only per base. So if you had another base, you could have another two gig and another base, another two gig. So which means one application in itself can never be really that big, uh, but you can have as many applications as possible to test it out. All right, so those are the limitations. So when you get started, that is um, uh, gonna be a bit of a challenge, uh, but you can pay, I mean, it's really reasonable priced. $10 a month is not a lot to get that space up to five gigs. Um, of, of, of attachments and if you have $20 a month you can get it to 20 gigs and this is the majority of hosting packages I deal with like um, the hosting package I deal with um, when I when you go to domains of zero zero for example and you buy a monthly hosting package they limit you at five gigs as well all right and you're paying about um, five six dollars for it okay so a table is not that expensive um, compared to even a standard hosting like domains, all right? And if you need even more space up to 20 gigs, you'll be paying that. So in my opinion, it's pretty reasonably priced for the service they're offering you, obviously. Um, so that is what the pricing looks like. And then let's get right into it, okay? So the list that I've prepared over here, we will be going through it, not necessarily in the same order, but at the end of the tutorial, I'll make sure that I've covered everything in here, all right? So when you get started with Airtable, you will need to create an account, obviously a profile, you know, um, so if you go over here, you would be able, I'm already logged in because I already have an account. But if you don't have one, just quickly go in and create an account. Um, I don't have to cover that. That's simple. And once you've created an account and you uh, for, remove this pricing at the end and you just do Airtable.com, obviously you'll have to confirm your email address and all sorts of things. You will um, find your user landing page for per se all right and in your user user landing page the first time you come here you will have to create a workspace which you can only have one workspace by the way um you know but within that workspace you can have multiple bases all right so a workspace is like your I don't know, just think about it as your, your home, your home page. And within that, you can have multiple bases. The bases are the databases, okay? So within one database, you can have multiple tables, 
all right but you can have as many bases as you like remember back to the pricing you can have many bases but within one base you are limited to the number of records you can have and the number of attachments um, you can have within one base okay so let's start by creating a base okay I'm gonna work I'm gonna say I want to create a database for for blogs okay because I think I want to build a blogging um, application um, with you guys here today because it's the simplest one to build um, and the point here is not to show you how to build an application but to show you how to how to use Airtable and what I like about um, uh, you know a, 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 the blogging example is that it has you know images it has text it has short text and it has all the sort of type data types that you would come across you know and it will cover a lot right so if you can build a blog application um, you can build any application all right um, the principles are the same um, you just have to understand the concepts so when you click on a base all right it will give you options over here you have an option to start with a template you have an option to import data and you have an option to start from scratch and I'm going to say start from scratch because I don't want to confuse you with the template. We'll spend a little bit of time in the end to have a look at the templates. They really have amazing templates on Airtable. But we, we just want to start from scratch. So click start from scratch like that. And we're going to call this, um, we're not going to give this uh, based a name. So let's call it um, Scholar Blog, all right? Like that. And let's uh, pick a, a main color. I like working with blue, light blue. Let's pick that. Oh, let me let's pick that. Uh, okay. So the limit you on the colors as well. Yee, okay, pink. Let's pick pink. Now red, red. I haven't used red before. All right. So this is gonna be scholar blog and um, and so forth. And what I wanna draw attention to over here um, is now the you know the navigation of um, how you navigate around here. Right at the top there you'll have your normal profile information, all right? You can go into your account, log out, and do all sorts of things. And over here, um, this is where your tables are. So if you thought of an Excel spreadsheet, so you would have a, a table is like a worksheet. So you have table one, you can have another one, you can have another one. So let's say you wanted to have another table over there, create an empty table, and you can call it, I don't know, users, all right? So that would be table two. And you can add another table, another table. So think of think of a, a, work, a worksheet, in Excel those are the what the tables are and if you have a table like this and you want to rename this table um, we're gonna rename this table blog all right and then we'll have blogs and we'll have users all right and then after that we will have um, within the table you have um, I mean within the worksheet you have your rows and your columns when you get started it will give you a default rows and default columns so what I want you to do is just to go over there and delete these rows and delete these columns as well, all right? Just delete the fields so that we can create our own fields that we want, all right? All right, and then on, uh, so the fields, um, the rows will define the types of data that we're entering, and then the rows will define the instances of that data. So if we were building a blog, for example, think about what kind of data would we want? We would want a title for the blog, all right? So this name doesn't even have to be named. If you clicked on it on this down arrow, all right, you have options of what you can do with it. You can customize the field, you can rename it, edit the description, permissions, duplicate, all sorts of things. So what I want to do here is that I want to rename this, okay? I don't, I don't want to call it name. I want to call it the title of the blog, all right? So a blog will have a title. And then once you've, you have that title over there, let's, let's, let's uh, have a short description. So once you add, you click on add a new um, tab over there, it will give you the different um, data types. All right, you will see these are all the different data types you can enter. And this is quite advanced. This is now another thing that is different from Excel, okay? Is that you can define these and then they really help you, you know, sort of group your data really well. So over here, let's say you can have single line text. You can have an attachment, a checkbox. You can even, yeah, you can have an attachment like an image or attachment like a document, okay? So you can add all of that to a data record, all right? You can have a checkbox. People, you know, you want to say people have they agreed or disagreed on something. You can have a multiple select. So this would be like a drop down where you would pick multiple items. You can have a single select, which is a drop down that you pick only one selection. All right. You can have a date, a phone number, an email, a URL. And the nice thing about this is that I think it will also help with the data validation. If you only want people to enter um, a URL in a certain 
column, then specify that data type as a URL. When you do SQL coding as well, uh, SQL database development, we also specify the type of data that goes into a column. It's very important so that the column can also be standardized and so that you can, when you're searching through the column, you can do that better. So um, be very specific about the data type over here. So what I want here is I want it to be, um, you have a short, a single line text and you have long text. So long, long text is more like your text area and single line text is just like a string, you know, that is not very long, all right? So um, let's use long text over here and call it, we're going to call it like a short description, okay? All right, and then you can create a field. So you have an option as well here to enable um, rich text formatting. This is like if you wanted, if people were gonna enter that information even like in HTML form so that you can be able to like, you know, be able to have a bold, like, you know, if you wanted to have rich text formatting inside your, 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 your field, like um, specify, you know, um, you know, format text, you know, for, uh, you know text sizes you know like html type formatting you would um uh, tick that but in this specific case i'm gonna leave it there because I, I don't think it's important for the purposes of what we're doing over here all right so we've created a new field that is called description so let's um create another one and um let's call it this time have a single line text and let's call this an author all right and then within our author actually i will have instead of uh, a single line text i will have um, you could have if you had users specifically that were creating the information and you wanted to keep track of w which user added uh, that and typically in a blog probably that's how you would do it but because i'm not going to be having multiple users in this space um, i will not have collaborator i will rather make it like a um, um i'll make it like um I'll make it like a um, like a, um, a single select, all right? And then I'll have like, you know, authors that you can choose from and then, you know, and then this will also show you how to do the select, all right? So, um, so let's say my, the first author is um, admin, all right? Add that option. The second author is um, Zatosh. And the last author is Maximus. All right, delete that. And and um, so this will be now um, select that you can pick from. Um, you can also uh, change the colors. So if you didn't like this color for admin, you wanted to maybe really use pink, you can change the color there. And you wanted to use green over there. And Maximus the great, you wanted him to have, I don't know, a gray color. Okay, gray is a bit dull. Let's pick another one you could do that that way and then you'll create the field so whenever you specify the author you would have you have to choose between the three authors that are available um, for this blog right so um, let's pick another one and call it description all right and we'll make this a long text similar to that one and we won't enable rich formatting all right and then let's have the last one as um okay we don't necessarily have to have the date here because um when you create a table um data in a table the date that you created it will be um you know um time stamped on um the data that you that you create so it's done automatically for you um you don't have to create a new um a new one so let's see another one um let's now pick um um Let's pick like a um, an attachment over here, and we're gonna call this the blog image. All right, and then there will be this will be an attachment. So every time you create an, a blog, you'll have to create an image. All right. So let's see. We have a title. We have a short description. We have an author. We have a longer description. Okay. So let me rename it. So if you wanted to rename, remember you can just go over there. So I can specify between the short description and the long description, and then we have the blog image. All right, let's see. What else do you want to include inside of our blog? Um, yes, um, the blog type. All right, so let's say um, the category of the blog, and this is perfect for a, a select. And um, so let's say we had, um, you know, um, we were blogging about, let's say, WordPress. All right, add an option, we're blogging about Python. Uh, let's add an option, we're blogging about 
um, WordPress, Python, e-commerce. All right, add an option. Okay, delete the last one. So I'll have three options and we create the field. So I think that's sufficient to get started and show you how all of this works, right? Now, um, let's say you wanted to move things around. Like you have the title there and you want the long description to be close to that. So you can just, you know, click on it and, and move it like that. All right, and you can see where it's going to end up. And then you have the short description, long description, author, blog image. Let's say you wanted to move the blog image there so that you have the author and you have the category at the end. That's how you do it, all right? And currently, the default view is always going to be a grid view. And this is where you have all the different types of views that you can have, all right? And you can add a view from here and edit there. So the default is a grid view. This is like your Excel spreadsheet view um, that you have. So let's um, let's enter, I'm gonna enter quickly. I'm gonna pause this video and enter some quick data, um, um, you know, uh, and then we can continue. Okay, so I've entered some sort of dummy data over there just to demonstrate and illustrate some of the concepts and uh, things that you can do on Airtable. Um, you know, when you have to uh, enter an image, I, I just left that open so that I could show you, um, you know, the last one, how you can do this. Now, what I really love about Airtable, and this is just amazing, um, you can, when you want to uh, attach an image or a document or, you know, a file, they give you all these options. So you could attach it from Facebook, Instagram, Google Drive, you know, like, like if you're saving information on, on like, you know, Dropbox, for example, you could attach it from there. You could attach it using a link URL if that um, a file is saved somewhere on an open um, HTTP. And, you know, so you have a lot of options of how to attach an image. And I haven't tested them all. I've tested the Google Drive one. Um, it works really well. Um, it will fetch the document from Google Drive. You'll have to give the permission for it to log into your Google Drive and um, attach that document. But it will store it on Airtable. You know, it sort of will fetch it for you there. So it really makes it... Um, you know, convenient, especially if you are migrating data from one place to another. And you, if you had stuff saved on Dropbox, for example, you could use this to do all of that. But not to digress, in this specific case, I'm going to just upload from my um, computer, all right? So that's the easiest one. You will just click on that up button and you'll pick um, an image to upload. So let's see what we are uploading for. Let me just remind myself, um, we are uploading for... What is this? Um, the Django one. Okay, good. So you'll just click on that and then you'll find um, the image that you want to upload. It's that one over there. And um, you, you can just click upload and it will um, quickly upload that for you. Okay. So once you've done that, I quickly want to now discuss the different views. As I said to you earlier on when we got started, this is a, um, a grid view and it's the default view that you will get. But you have a lot of options over here that you can work with, all right? So the next interesting view that um, I want to show you is what they call the form view, all right? And it, it, it sort of um, it allows you to create to, to sort of view your information in, in, a form of a for, in a form, which you can actually even share with other people and use it to enter data into your database, all right, without even building a, um, you know, um, an API um, end, okay? So if you click the form view, for example, it will open it up and it will open up a form, all right? And this form will be created based on the you know, the, 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 the variables or the fields that you have on your table. So this is your title, your short description, your long description, the blog image and author. These are the same um, fields that you have over here. All right. So I've, once I clicked that form, it added it to my views. All right. So initially I had only that. Now I've got this as well. So um, these, 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 these are all the variables that are in here inside of your columns, your short descriptions and so forth. So the form has already been pre sort of set up for you based on how your table looks like. Now, um, some of these things you cannot um, do, so you can't add a cover image and you can't add a logo if you're still on the free version. And I think this is one of the things that, you know, so the form will still work, but if you're going to share it with people, it's going to look very, very blank and it's not going to look very, very nice, but it doesn't matter either way. Uh, for the purposes of what we're trying to achieve here today, um, you know, you can't edit the label, you, you, you know, you um, have to show the A-table branding and um, there's no redirect URL. All of these things are... You know, um, sorry, they're like these, these ones with a star. You have to be, um, you know, on the premium version to be able to do this. Now, um, let's 
share the form. You know, if you look at the top over there, you can open form, you can share the form. This is what I wanted to show you. You can share the form and open it in a new um, window and um, and then people can be able to complete the form. There's an option over here for if you have, um, I didn't see that before, um, upgrade to restrict by password or email or domain, all right? So you, otherwise, anybody can complete your form, all right, if they have the link. This works very similar to Google Forms. You know how Google Forms works? Um, if you're trying to gather information about something, you're doing a survey, you send out a, a Google Form, and people complete it, but... You know, it's so it's open that anybody who has the link can complete it, you know, and so it sort of works like that. And it's 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 not very secure if your database is um you know um I mean if you're working on an important database, maybe you wanna get for the premium one so you can secure it with a password, but if you're learning and testing it out, it's sufficient for a lot of what we normally wanna do with this. So nonetheless, let's go and have a look at the form. All right, so this is the link you can share with anybody. So if you take this link and you put it on an email address, on a WhatsApp page, you know, whoever it is, and you share this link with that person, they will find this form. And this form links directly to your Airtable um, database. So let's uh, complete this form very, very quickly. So let's say we want to add an extra blog to our database. Um, so let's say we'll call it, um, you know, learning step-by-step -step guide. All right, and for the descriptions over here, I'm just going to work off, um, you know, some of what I already have here. I just copy and paste it to save time. I'm not going to think about what to say. So for the short description, I'm just going to paste that. And for the long description, I'm going to do the same. I will go over there and look for the long description and just get that dummy text. And I'm going to paste that. All right, and then uh, paste that for the long description. And then you'll see blog image. You can also attach a file over here. Unfortunately for the form, oh, actually it also allows you, it has that, um, so even your users would be able to attach it from any other location. But we are going to attach it from our computer and uh, we're going to upload that. All right. And then I'm um, going to create an author. Um, let's pick that one. And these are all the select items that you already have. And this is going to be, what are we going to call this? Python e-commerce. It's none of these. Jeez, let's call it WordPress. Just to complete the form. And let's submit it. All right. So your user, whoever had had that link, anybody with this link would be able to submit this. So I'm going to close that. And um, if we go back to our Airtable database, you'll see this is a new uh, uh, row wasn't here before. Um, this is all the information we entered. This is the file we attached. This is um, just been entered from the form. So if you shared this information, this form with anybody, um, whoever, as soon as they complete that form, whatever the information they've completed is going to be automatically added to your Airtable database. So obviously, be careful how you're sharing that 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 form. But it is like how Google Forms works. Now, um, there's a lot of other views here. I think the calendar view is not really important right now because we don't have dates over here. Uh, and the Kanban view really doesn't make sense for what we're trying to do here with the blog. I think a, a view that I can show you here is um, the gallery view, okay? So let's add the gallery view because I think that's an interesting one. So the gallery view shows us like, like that, you know, and you can see it in a nice different format. You know, the image at the top over there, your short, long description, you know, so basically all the information that you have in a, in a view that you can sort of, like with the picture taking a bigger spot and um, showing showing that in a gallery format, all right? You can share the view, you can uh, filter, you know, so there's a lot of things, advanced things that for now are not necessary for what we're what we achieving, but at least now you can see the different views. And you can also move between your views. So if you wanted to see this in a list format like this, you can do that with a grid view, which is the default view. But if you wanted to change that quickly and maybe you want the pictures to be more prominent, then you can immediately just click on the gallery view and it will uh, change that. And you can also move your views around um, like that. And if you want the gallery view to be at, at the top and the grid view to be at the bottom or the form to be at the top, you can adjust um, this list over here. And every time you click on, on a view over there, it will appear there. And if you don't want it, for example, you don't want this form view anymore, you can uh, rename it, okay, and call it something else, or you can delete uh, the form, all right? And you can say delete that form. I don't want it anymore. Um, um, and then the grid view and the gallery view, maybe you want to rename it because perhaps the grid view doesn't make sense to you. You can click on that and you can rename it and you can call this, um, you know, blog list. All right. 
and then um, over here you can call it whatever so you have options on what to do with your view and I think this is sufficient for getting started with a table um, what I've shown you already so far is sufficient for you to go ahead and do a lot um, on a table so I'm going to go back over there and um, and just show you something else that I was supposed to show you at the beginning and this is um, the a table templates all right so if you have a look or at the top um, there you will see um, a, you know a tab for templates and if you open it up like that um, you will see all the different templates you can work with you know depending on what you're trying to do right so you have you have like categories over here that you can choose from all right publishing real estate startup software development so let's click that and see what they've got under software development and you've got a uh, growth experiments product launch product planning startup org chart team org chart you know value risk matrix you know user story mapping you know let's pick growth experiments all right and you can see under growth experiments you have a couple of you know they show you you know that what the template looks like all right you know you have um you know uh, all the different rows so the template will come with some dummy data it will come with you know um, you know columns you know and and rows you know so to, to sort of help you get started if you wanted to build something like what the template is for all right and I think there's also a video on the template page that you can watch um, to, to see more and it will show you also if it has more than one right and you can immediately click on use template over there and it will use this template and will create for you a base with that template and you can go into personal let's see what they've got under personal okay let's say you've got CRM lightweight CRM let's see personal CRM over there and see what they've got over there um, so the CRM is like you know if you were building your own relationship management system um, you know for you know for yourself on a personal basis maybe you're interpreting and you want to keep track of all the people that you're meeting the, the you know the leads that you're building in one place maybe you can st get started with this all right maybe let's pick this one and have a look at the personal CRM template because there is a lot I, I just wanted to show you there is so much on Airtable especially with um, with templates and things that are already done for you and you can have a look over there So this we won't be able to use because um, we can we can we don't have the that version But you can see over here now. This these are all the views we talked about right? so they've already pre-prepared pre a lot of views and um, You know to, to, to work with uh, and you can see these ones are already filtered views all right filtered filtered views and this this template is it might look complicated like it has a lot but think about it from what we did previously you have your rows um, you have your columns you have your tables over there um, and then you have your views over here so take the time to um, go through the templates figure out the kind of templates you want to work with you know what makes sense you see this already has some nice interesting fake data for you so you can see what a table can do all right so I don't want to spend more time than that on um, discussing a template now this CRM once once you import it it's already inside of your basis so if you go back you will see personal CRM um, has been added and these are all the other bases that you've got I actually want to delete this I want to delete this base I don't want it I was just showing you how to um, use um, I mean how to create a base uh, from a template and I think that's 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 sufficient uh, for a table from the a table side what we're gonna do now in the next part of the tutorial is that we're going to work off um, this data um, where is it let's go to our back to our scholar blog we're gonna work off this data and build an actual um, application that um, is gonna be showing us the blogs um, and feeding that data um, I mean getting that data from a table as a back-end which is really what we do in this channel um, app development so let's continue um for our um, application up front end um, we're going to go for a no code option but definitely you can go for a coded option but to save time in this tutorial we're gonna look at um, no code um, you know tools that you can use and last week we, we worked with software today um, I'm gonna take you through app Giver. and um, the reason why I want you to see app Giver is although um, it's slightly it has a lot sort of a longer learning curve than uh, software what, uh, what I like about AppGyver is that it has the ability to um, for you to build one app uh, on AppGyver and be able to deploy it on multiple platforms so you can build it like a web application and deploy it on the web but you can also build it like a mobile application and deploy it on 
um, you know, a mobile, whether it's Android or Apple, and you'll see all the different options you can do with AppGava. So AppGava is great in that sense um, that it allows you to, you know, to build uh, apps in from one code end, um, but I'll be able to deploy it multiple uh, from in multiple locations. All right, in native format. So let's, as usual, start with the pricing for AppGiver so you can see how much it costs. Okay, so they it says, well, Composer Pro is free. All right, that's really nice. Um, so on the pricing page, there is no prices because everything is free, all right? It's free for organizations that are making less than 10 million US dollars. That's over 150 um, million uh South African rent per annum, and I don't think a lot of companies are anywhere close to that. So basically, what they're telling you is that you can use it for free until you're really, really rich. Then you're gonna have to start paying. So um, because it's uh, it's pretty much free, um, just go over there, uh, log in, and create an account. And um, I think I've already done that. I've I've already logged in, and I have an account. That's why it's taking me through um, to the platform .appgiver. But in your case, when you click log in create an account you'll just go through the process as usual create your account um username password da, 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 confirm your email address and then come back here on platform.appgava.com to continue um with us okay so at the top there you're going to say create new all right create a new application so let's click on create new application and we're going to go into composer pro and then um so the only really um sort of options you have here is the dark theme or a default theme so i'm going to go for a default theme and i'm going to call this um you know a scholar blog um let's call this um course course blog created all right and um an app cover is one of those sort of drag and drop you know systems and tools you know but what i really like as well on top of it being drag, drag and drop is not just drag and drop front end it allows you to also integrate back ends like um um a table or right? so that your app can have like a a database a uh, back end all right so once you get into app Giver over here all right you will see um, the way the navigation of AppGava is a bit complex. The first time I came here, I struggled a bit. It wasn't so intuitive, but I think I've gotten, I figured it out now, all right? So over here to the, the moment you land, you will see um, at the top there, the name of your um, app that you're building and then the page that you're on, right? It says empty page, all right? So empty page is like the first page and you can edit it over there. So edit that empty page perhaps and call it a home page so that you don't confuse, you're not confused about that. And you can create a description for this and say this is the landing home page, home page for our, for um, Scolo, I mean course blog, Scolo online. Right, that's all right, and um, that's it. That's all the sort of the customization you have over there, and you can uh, do a little bit about the styling, you know, creating padding. You know, you can see there it's minus 16, 16 over there. You can increase it, you can change the background color, and all sorts of other things. But I'm not going to focus on styling in this tutorial. The purpose of this tutorial is to create the um, you know, the app. Um, you know front end for our back end a table all right so let's have a headline um and let's call this you know um or you can change it over there all right so let's call this um you know start start reading on start reading today whatever and then i'll leave that actually maybe i will delete this so let's say you wanna delete it, you can delete it over there. Start reading today, um, scholar online, YouTube channel. Yeah, scholar online YouTube channel. Let's leave it like that. All right. So the the drag and drop is really really easy. So you can pick a sort of a component, all right, or a widget from the left, and you sort of just let's say you wanna put an image, you just drag it over there all right and then the image will come and it will fill over there and then um at the top here um you you can choose the sort of the device that you want to sort of preview this on this is why um i was saying that you can build an app that will be deployed on 
on, on a lot of multiple devices. So you can sort of preview it as you go along. Okay, so if you want to see what it looks like on your phone, you can click over there and it will preview it for you like that. And if you want to see what it, what it will look like on um, a web, on the website, this is what it will look like on the website. And um, on an iPad, I think we had it on an iPad mini before because it's somewhere in the middle of your phone and your website and maybe it's easier to work with so you're not too far off on the small side and on the, on the big side, all right? So you've added an image over there and then you can go and click on this image, all right? And then you can change the content of the image to the right, okay? So the way it works is you, you pick your widgets on the left over here, you drag them onto the canvas per se, and then you can click on the specific um, component and then it will open up the detailed uh, uh, you know uh, sort of information about that component and then you can change the information that's included in the component you can edit this you can repeat or you can do a whole lot of other things all right and if you don't like this component or anymore you can click there and delete it but before we delete it let's 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 leave it highlighted so that it's opening up on the property side on the properties and then uh, imagine you wanted to change that image you can click on upload a file and you can upload a different file like that one over there and um, you know it will upload that file there um, you're just gonna wait for it a little bit and this is the file all you need to know um, a table scholar online all right so this is how you would enter an image all right so you can scroll up a little bit and let's say you wanted to have a title or a paragraph you would do the exact same thing um, you would enter a paragraph there and then it will open up there and then you can type anything that you want to enter in there but I'm going to delete this paragraph because I want to now immediately show the list of blogs that we have um, over there all right so um, in order to do that um, I want to pick um, a list all right so you, you'll see there's different types of lists you can have here you have a list divider a list header um, an image a list item um, large image list item list item icon list item and so forth so there's many types of items here but I think I want to work with this because it looks like it's got a list an image sort of like a title and like a little paragraph let's um, look at it in detail there you go. You see it's got like a little bit of an image there, a title and description. This will be nice for our blog. We can show um, our blog image, the title, and you can show like the short description perhaps. And then somebody can click on it and then you can open a detailed page for the blog. All right. Now we've done that, but um, there's no data yet. This is just the app up front end. Okay. So um, when you're navigating, you have your components. You have um, the property uh, tab over there. You have at the top, um, you know, some navigation links as well, uh, we'll launch theme data and so forth. What I want you to click on at the top there is the data, um, you know, is the data navigation button because this is going to take you to the app data where the app is going to be getting its data from because we're going to link our API to that data uh, panel. Okay. So if you click on it, it opens a completely new window and it says there's no data sources added. So let's click uh, the plus button there to add a new uh, data source. You can either have it as a client side storage. This is if it's stored like on the client's device. And then you can code that like that or REST API integration marketplace search. So I'm going to use REST API integration because this is the, we're going to be using um, the, um, the API from Airtable, all right? And then um, once you click REST API integration, um, you have to call it something. So I'm going to call this the Airtable database, all right? And you can have a short description. I'll just paste the same thing over there. And then you need a URL for that, okay? Now, to get the URL for the, um, um, you know, um, the database, I mean, the Airtable database, you need to go back to Airtable and find the API documentation. Okay, I'm going to show you the quickest way to get to the Airtable API documentation, and it is through Google, all right? So I just Google um, Airtable API like that. All right, the REST API A table, click on that. So once you click on that, if you, and this will work only if you're already logged in and you already have a Google, I mean, an A table account, of course. Um, you, will, you will be able to see all your different, um, you know, bases, all right? And this is, this is, this is a really nicest thing about the API from ATA. It's, it's one of the nicest APIs I've worked with because um, when, when you go through the documentation, it actually rewrites the documentation to fit 
your table so that you don't have to think about the blank spaces. It fills in the blank spaces for you. So if you're a real beginner and you're not really good with coding, Airtable is really a way to go, right? So um, the one that we just, the, the latest um, uh, base that we created is this Scholar blog uh, base. So just click on the Scholar blog uh, base and um, it will open up documentation. And you'll see this documentation, it's sort of streamlined to look like your Airtable base. On our Airtable base, we have um, the blog table, the users table errors. Okay. Authentication. We don't have any authentication. Um, for now, um, we, um, didn't create that. Um, so let's just go into the blog table. Remember we've got the blog table and the users table and we didn't do anything with the users table. All our information is sitting in the blogs table, right? So in the blogs tables, we have, we can list the records or we can retrieve a record. So there's a lot more to the, to the API. You can go through the documentation for creating a record and for updating a record. It will work similarly. If I show you the listing and the retrieving, those are the two most important ones. Okay. So you can click on list record and then it will show you code snippets over there for curl and for JavaScript. Okay. Because I'm not writing this on JavaScript. Um, I'm writing this on, um, so I'm not writing it on curl either, but curl is a good way to show you what actually the URL must look like and what all the different sort of like, you know, the headers or, you know, um, you know, if, if it's a post, if it's a put, whatever, you know, it will show you a lot of, a lot of all of that. So with, um, with this specifically, if we want to list the records, right, this is the URL we will have to talk to. Okay. Up to date. This is the URL we'll have to send our information to. That URL is, uh, it includes um, this API dot uh, table dot com. It's version zero. And you'll see there is a number over there. All right. This number is your app ID. All right. So if you look at your um, uh, documentation, um, I think to the left over there, um, I think if you read it, you will see it. It explains it. All right. So I've already read it. So I know this is um, the app ID. This is unique to your specific application and um, specific um, table. I mean, yeah, specific base. And um, and then you have the blog. This is the table inside that blog. Okay. So if you had another table, users table, for example, the app would be exactly the same, but the table would be like, you know, users or whatever. It would be a different table there. All right. Uh, but you don't have to think about what this is because when you go through the documentation and you click the table that you want specifically and you go over there, it will give you the complete uh, URL. All right. So I'm just going to uh, copy this URL as it is before the question mark without the question mark because the question mark is uh, for something else. Um, so just copy all of that and go back to um, AppGyver. All right. And here where it says a resource URL, Okay, you're going to paste that all the way up to the blog without the question mark. Okay, so do it just before the question mark over there. And then you'll see um, there's max records and then there's view gallery. That's not important for now. Um, um, what's important here is the authorization because you have to specify this inside of your headers of your request. Okay, so let's just copy that so we don't get the spelling wrong. And um, so in, inside of um, AppGyver, you will see the HTTP header. You have to include a header over there. All right. Again, the label, you can just call it authorization. The key is authorization um, and it's a type text. And then you can put in the value. All right. So the value for that um, is this a bearer and API key like that. Okay. So you will go over here and you'll paste that a bearer api key but obviously you need to replace this your api key with your api key and how you get your api key is that you go if you go back to um wherever your table is right at the top over there under your little face before you upload a profile picture you will see account maybe open that in a new tab um and if you go to account and you'll see over there api key all right so just click on it and then you'll be able to copy it and uh, paste it Okay, so once you've done that, so if, uh, you paste it over there and then you continue. Now I've clicked on the get collection get because we want to get a list of, um, you know, of, of blocks. So you have the different types here. You can get a record, which is getting an individual record. Getting the collection is getting the entire list. Okay, create a record is like um, adding one new record. It will be similar to what we do with the form. Update a record is put and delete a record is delete. Okay, so I'm not going to wire all of these. I'm just going to wire the collection, which is the list. So we want to get the list and then we want to get an individual record. So let's start with the list. Okay, in order to get the list, 
we're gonna put in this URL okay and then you have the uh, sort of like the the query parameters um, over there right so the query parameters are these ones over here that after the question mark these are your your two queries the first uh, query parameter is the maximum records must be three and you'll see an end in between and the second one is a view is across a gallery so everything after the question mark is your query parameters and they are separated by an end in between okay so the first one is max records so let's define that max records all right so i'm um, going to query parameters we'll put the label as max, max records we'll put the key as max records we'll put the description as max, max records and we won't make it three we'll make it five because i know i have at least four blogs in there all right and then we're going to save that and then um the next query parameter that we need to add is the view and the view must be gallery okay so um let's put that in there the next query parameter Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to save it again. And once we've done that, we're going to go into the HTTP header. So we need to just include that header in here as well. All right. So the label again is authorization. And the value is bearer API key. And again, we're going to copy our API key. We're going to paste it in there. We're going to save. right and if you look at the um, the documentation it shows you that when you get that when you when you send this request this is the example response you're gonna get the example response is really useful to help you pass the response on the client side so we know we're gonna get an object a, a JavaScript I mean a, 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 a JSON object and inside that JSON object will be records and, and then inside of the records will be the list, okay? So AppGava is expecting to get a list that it can iterate through, all right? So if you just send it this uh, and it gets this response, which is not a list, it's going to give you an error. And I'll show you that. So if you go into test and you do run test, you will see that um, it says error response, okay? The result that you received was not an array, okay? You need to be able to get an array. And if you look at the example response, you'll see the array is inside of the object. And this array is under the key records. So you have to copy these records, all right? And go back to AppGyver. And inside of the config, you need to add the records here like that so that AppGyver knows that it, whatever object it gets it must look inside of the key called records that's where it will find the list so if you go back to test and you run your test again this time you'll see the status is okay because it's now getting a list all right and once you see status okay like that what i want you to do and don't forget to do this because you're going to have issues later on if you don't do this and this is where i got stumbled the first time all right click on that set schema from response okay don't forget to do this all right, so that you don't have to set the schema manually, you set it from the response and then it's going to read into all of this and figure out what comes in there so you can attach it on the front end inside of your application. Once you've done this, you're good to go, actually. You're going to go back. You just close that X button at the top to go back. So close that and it will take you back to the page that you're in. All right. And then you're going to go over there on the title. And then um, so we're going to we're going to I mean, we're going to wire our list to this. All right. So let's see. So we need to start by saying it's repeated, okay? So it's definitely repeated. 
and it's repeated from data and variables because we, we now have the data inside of our um, application now and um, this data is um, data variables all right okay so we haven't defined it yet so what we have to do um, over here is we need to go to variables there so from view you see that view just We're gonna add an app variable, and um, we're gonna just call this variable. We're gonna call this blog list. All right. Uh, we're gonna call this blog list, and then we're gonna say save. All right. Um, once we've done that, then we can go back to the view. Okay. Then we're going to uh, click on that item over there and then we're going to choose repeat again. So let's try this again and then let's click uh, data variables. Let's look for the data variable. Um, when, you, when you get here, you need to go to data variables, not app variables. Sorry, you need to add a data variables. And then on data variables, you will add it and you'll see that you can, have to, you can pick the Airtable database which you've already created in the back end. All right, and then uh, click on Airtable database one, and then click save. All right, and um, you could rename this data variable, and you could call this the blog list, for example, if you wanted. Okay, blog list, and click save. So that is your data variable um, that that comes from the backend, not page variable or app variable. So you need to pick that. Okay, so once you've done that, then you go back to the view, and um, we're gonna try this again. Let's refresh this. Click on it and go to um, repeat because we want to create a list. Okay. And then you can now go into data variables and click data variable. And then you'll see the block list appears there. And then you can say save. All right. So then you'll see now it will show like it's a list of something because it's expected to get a list of something, but it doesn't quite know a list of what yet because you are saying yes, you're going to get this from the data variable that you, that you have already defined in the back end that you're getting from your... API call, but you actually have to now link or connect or what we call, um, you know, marry um, the title, the image to a variable inside of your data list. Okay. So you have to marry the title to the title and the image to the image. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay. So in order to do that, you can go on the title and click title. All right, and then you're gonna say property of data in item repeat because now you've already defined your data variable uh, list. You now have to go and find a specific property in that list that you wanna connect the title to. So if you click over there, you will see that um, current is, is, is the one that's open. Just um, open it up and current sort of represents the instance, the current instance of the list that we're in right now. All right, so the current instance is we want to uh, connect that to the title of the blog. All right, and once you've done that, just click save, and then you'll see it will already like you know tell you what you should, you should expect to get there. So you make sure that you got it right. Okay, so the title has now been linked to the current. The current is the current instance. The current instance fills a title. All right, then let's go to the description text. All right, this we want to link it to the short description. Remember, we don't want to link to the long one. That's why we created that short description. So let's do it like that and um, click save. And then this will now be the short description. And um, we want to link the image, all right? So let's link the image to um, over there. And you'll see when you click uh, uh, that, you know, when you, when you go to the image, um, you're, gonna, you're having a bit of a problem here now. All right, where's the image, blog image? Um, you'll see you can't click on the blog image because it's like deeper into the schema, all right? But there's a way to solve this, all right? So the way to solve it, instead of doing a property in data item, we're going to use formula, all right? And then for the formula, we're going to click down on the formula there and we're going to find data variables. And then we're going to find the image URL so that we can go deeper and deeper into them, into the schema, all right? So what we want is the, the blog list fields blog image url that's the one that we want so this is the blog url and you can double check this again over here in your documentation you will see that you get the records and instead of the records you get a list instead of the list you have fields and instead of the fields um under the blog image is another list but instead of the uh, the blog image at zero so say the first image 
okay you'll have the id and you have a url this url is a url of the image okay so if you copy this url for example and you paste it anywhere okay you'll be able to see your your image this is this is the url of the image so um when you go back to upgiver that's what you want uh, if you go deeper into the schema you want the fields block image at zero because there's uh, uh, there's other uh, you know items in the block image um you know um field which is like a thumbnail or whatever depending whether you want to show your thumbnail but i'm going to show the, the the original image and then we're going to just say enter over there and then you'll see at the top once you click enter it's added there but there's a bit of an error because of the um of that so just remove that there and then click save all right and click save and immediately um it will find that image all right uh but i i think i've gotten it wrong here because this is the background image ah no okay no um, I don't want to do that for the background image. I want to do that for this image, for this image, that image. Data variables with my image URL. Okay, add that. Remove what was there already. Save, save. Okay, there you go. So I want the image over there with the title and the short description and that's pretty much what i want to show here okay so we can immediately save this app and then see what it looks like okay if we wanted to test it out and um you can let me know if there's a faster way to do this but it looks like you know i don't see it like an immediate button here that says quick preview so um i went to a launch and open app in in preview portal like that and um, it will preview what your app currently looks like. Um, you have a couple of apps here. Uh, course blog, which I just updated now. That's the old one. So open that one. So this is what the app looks like now. Okay. Um, creating a free e-commerce website with Airtable and software step-by-step -step WordPress, Python, Django, learning Airtable. So why am I, is the image the same? Um, so this is the home page all right this is the navigation at the top that's the app um and it's got the list of your blogs over there but that's not what i want um, um that's not what i want at all uh i'm going to go back oh, so this is preview by the way when you're ready you can you know you can like preview on all of these um but for now i'm just doing it in the app portal to save time so i'm going to close this and and see what am i doing wrong here Okay, um, so let's look at this image source and see what we're doing here. So we're saying uh, the blog list at zero. Okay, so let's see. Uh, data variables. Okay, let's see what's here. Current. Yeah, I need to use current, not blog list. Okay, so I need to, this needs to be current, okay, dot fields. Okay, so by the way, you can edit it over here, all right, if you want. So you can just say current, like that, all right. So it can say, you can have current dot fields dot blog image zero URL. Okay, let's save that again and save and see what's, what's the, um, save the, so that it's on current, not uh, data blog list, because current is the current, you know, um, instance that we're in. I think that's the problem that we had. So let's um, now try and preview this again. Launch, um, open preview window. There you go. That's much better. Okay. So you can see now. This is a list of your blogs. And um, you can see the description and um, I mean the short description and the title. And now what I want to do is to create a, an ability to, to click on this blog and it opens up on a new window, which is the detailed page. And it shows you the long description and everything else, uh, the author and all sorts of things of the blog. So um, let's close that and we'll do that very, very quickly. So we need to start, first of all, by um, at the top there, we want to create a new page. So click on home. Home, remember, is the current page that you're on. All right. So click home. And uh, you'll see this is the whole uh, current page that you're on. 
So you can add a new page here and you're going to call this new page uh, detailed detailed blog um, and we'll open that detailed blog page and um, over here I want this to be the title of the blog I want this to be the um, long description of the blog actually the short description is fine and then I'll have an image all right and then after an image I'll have a paragraph uh, and I'll have the long description like that so I'll have actually maybe not the, yeah I'll have the I'll have that heading I'll have that the author I'll put the author over there and then I'll put that um, um, uh, but before we can do that we need to then wire the detailed API call so if you go to the API calls remember we've got the list API call but we need to go into the retrieve a record API call. This is now the API call that retrieves one object at a time. Okay, so it will have um, the record ID that you need to specify at the end. Okay, so in order to do that, we'll just save this for now. Okay, um, because we can't wire it yet. We haven't specified that data set. Uh, we need to, you need to go back to, um, to the data. All right, and go back to the Airtable database. And um, you need to click on... Um, um, uh, a get record okay so get record is when you need to get the individual record okay and you'll see it's already been pre-populated for you you need to specify the record id at the end that's okay um and um what else do you need to do if there's a response key path you need to specify that so let's look at the api again all right we need the authorization on the header that's the only thing we need and there's no um there is no like there's no question mark and sort of um, other other variables we need to, to introduce there. So um the only thing we need to do is the header. So let's uh paste that in there. This is authorization, authorization, authorization. It's a text, yes. Authorization, and then put it uh, paste it in there. All right, and then once you've done that, we're going to go to test, okay? And then um, we want to test this, uh, but in order to test it, let's provide it with an ID. So you need to specify an ID. Let's pick an ID there. Let's pick that ID. Always run a test before you do anything so you can see the schema and you can see that um, you've set up everything correctly. All right, so I've given it an ID and then it has run the test uh, successfully. Okay, so because it's done that, I'm going to leave this part. Okay, I'm going to go back to the front end. That's all you need to know on the all you need to do on the back end is to specify that because every time we call this uh, detailed thing, we'll have to specify what the user ID, I mean, what the record ID is. Okay, so you can close that immediately. Okay, now that we're done with our, our back end wiring with the API, we've tested it, we know that it all works well, that it can fetch individual detailed information from our Airtable API. We need to now wire the detailed uh, blog page to um, information that's going to be collected from the back end data. Okay, remember, you can sort of uh, toggle between the view and the variables for this page. So we need to set a couple of variables before we get started, before we can wire these, these, these elements. So click on variables at the top over there, and you'll see you have different types of variables on your on your left. At the, you have app variables, page variables, page parameters, and a data variables, okay? So you have to start by setting the page parameters, okay? The page parameter is going to be a parameter that must be specified when you open the page because that page parameter is going to be used later on to set the data uh, a variable so um, we're going to add a parameter over there and we're just going to call this parameter id so that is sort of similar to what we're calling it on the back end okay so just call it id and um there's no example variable you can just leave it as id and uh text um and save that okay so you create just a text a parameter that's called ID. This means that every time you open up this page, you have to specify that page parameter. What is the ID? Because the API is going to need that ID to be able to call the a blog that is related to that ID. 
then after that we go to our, our data variables and there's nothing over here so let's just add one and um, we can only add this one a table database and remember we have two types of apis we've defined we have the collection of data records and a single data record the collection of data record represents the list okay so the collection list we don't want to show the collection on this page we want to show a single data record okay a single data record and already it, it prompts us there that if you want to show a single data record you have to specify the id for that data okay this is the same id that will be brought in from the page parameter okay so let's specify that and then this um id is going to be uh from variables it's going to come from the page parameter because we've called it on the page parameter as an id so let's uh, do that and then it's the id from the page parameter and that's sorted so um this uh to call a single data record uh which is going to be called a table database one we have to specify the id where that id going to come from it's going to come from the page parameter okay so that's done and you can save this over there that's what you need to do on the variable side to be good to go then you can go on the view side all right, on the view side now we can um, uh, refresh this again because this image always disappears when you go back from variables. Okay, so let's wire all these individual items. So the headline, okay, click on that. The headline is going to come from the data variables It's going to come from the data variable and we have our schema over there the headline is going to be that title okay so click on the title um the title from the schema will represent the headline and it will give you an example of what that headline would look like okay um this one we wanted this to be the i think the the the, the, the author of the blog so um let's go back to data variables and um click on that and i will open up our schema and find where the author is and I click on the author so that it will display the author there right and here needs to be the image all right remember for the image because it's deep inside of the schema we have to use a formula and um, let's just uh, uh, have a look at the data variables with the formula over there we need the, um, the fields a blog image URL okay so let's see what that is um, blog images zero URL okay let's save that um data variables uh blog image url you've selected it or you have to enter it first and then just make sure it's properly set up there and that's the blog url okay so that's save let's see what appears there that's good and then we need to do the a detailed uh description of the blog um we'll do that as well we'll go into our data variables um and select it from the schema and that should be the long um long description and um, that's good to go. And so this is what the detailed page will look like. Okay, if you want, you can add a button at the bottom that says navigate to, and you can navigate back to the home page. but it doesn't matter. I'm not gonna do that. I'm just going to save this. So we've built our detailed page. You have to specify the ID when you go into the detailed page, and that ID is gonna come in as a page parameter. That page parameter will be fed into um, the data variable, and then it will uh, be used to call the API so that we know what blog we need to be calling for the detailed page. Once you've done this, um, save that and navigate back to the home page because we want now to create that link that when somebody clicks on this, it takes them to the detailed page. Okay, so um, uh, highlight that or click on it so that it opens up on the left. Okay, and once that is opened up, um, just you know expand at the bottom there, you'll see there's an arrow that goes up. Just click on that expanding arrow because that's where you'll be able to see the logic that goes with this item okay so we have an event and the event is component tap so we want to know what must happen when somebody taps on this component okay so when somebody taps on this we want to open a new page so there's a the navigation logic uh, items all right and you just click on it and the same way we drag and drop um the uh, items at the top components at the top we can drag and drop this in there as well and then once you dro you drop that in there you can just create the link from this to that which means when somebody taps there um, you must open a new page and then if you click on that open a new page it will tell you which page you must open okay there's only two page one page you can open it's the detailed block page because that's the only available page but you'll see that detailed uh, page requires a page parameter that you have to specify okay so what is that page parameter going to be click on it 
we must get it off our data repeat items uh, and we must go and look at the current um, the current sort of instance and we must find from the current instance the ID all right because that's the ID inside of the current ID that will be the parameter that we must feed in there because that ID is the one that's going to be used inside of the next API to call the detailed uh, blog page okay so let's save that over there and um, let's then save that completely so that um, you know link has been done there already that's all you have to do to link this page the next one um, is to create a component tap event and then specify that when that is tapped what must be opened and if there's anything that must be fed into opening of the new page you specify that in there and that's done okay so we can now go and test our application we've uh, saved it um, let's go there to the launch window and open it in a new portal and see what we've got here. So this is uh, the blog over there. Let's open it up. All right. So this is the home page. Obviously, when you open an application, it starts on the home page. Our list is still looking good as it was before. If I click this specifically, it should open the detailed page, but on the Django application. So let's click on it and see what happens. There you go. It opens the detail page on the blog application and you'll see the author there is admin. And if you go back to the home page and you click on another blog like this one, for example, it should open up the detailed page on a different blog because every time it's being fed a different a blog ID. And if you um, click on this one as well, it will do the same. And that's how I, how we would wire a detailed uh, blog page um, uh, for people to see. All right. And again, um, thank you guys for watching. I think what we'll do next time is that, you know, AppGyver is really nice and at least you can see how to do it on AppGyver. But perhaps since we are web developers on this channel, perhaps we are going to now link um, Airtable API to uh, proper coding on, um, you know, Python, maybe HTML. You know, we'll see how to build a proper web application um, using Airtable as a back end. We'll see you guys next week and thank you guys very much for watching.